Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I am going to take you through different building blocks of Azure Compute Services. Azure Compute Services can be divided broadly into three categories. The first one is Infrastructure as a Service and the second one is Platform as a Service and the third one is Serverless Services. Within Infrastructure as a Service, the most fundamental building block is Azure Virtual Machine. Using Azure Virtual Machine, you can able to deploy different servers such as Windows, Linux within Azure Cloud. And when you deploy virtual machine, every virtual machine will have an associated OS and data disk. This OS and data disk will be stored in a storage account within Azure. And there are different ways of provisioning these disks such as managed, unmanaged disks and also standard and premium. All of these things I'm going to take you through in detail in the subsequent lectures. And one more common requirement when you are deploying virtual machines within the cloud is to apply some configuration on top of that virtual machine, such as running some scripts, etc. For that purpose, Azure provided number of extensions, such as custom script, PowerShell DSC, which stands for desired state configuration. You can have diagnostics extension to collect all the logs that are emitted from that virtual machine. And also you can have anti-malware software installed on that virtual machine to protect it against viruses and all those stuff. So there are a lot of extensions that you can apply on top of the virtual machine. Extensions are not the only way. You can use Azure Automation also. Using Azure Automation, you can also do some compliance checks, whether the virtual machine is adhering to those compliance features or not. If any virtual machine is found to be not adhering to a particular compliance standard, then you can run certain scripts on that virtual machine to make it compliant. And the next common requirement when you deploy virtual machines in the cloud is to monitor them. For that purpose, Azure provided number of monitoring tools. The fundamental one is Azure Monitor using which you can monitor different metrics associated with that virtual machine. And also you can configure different alerts, which I'm going to show you in the subsequent lectures. And if you want to do a complex analysis on the logs that are coming out of that virtual machine, then you can use log analytics. And the next common requirement with respect to virtual machines is backup and recovery. For that purpose, Microsoft provided different tools such as Azure Backup, using which you can take the backup of your virtual machines regularly and store that backup within a recovery vault. And if something happens to your virtual machine, you can recover the VM using the backup that is stored in the recovery vault. And similarly, from the disaster recovery perspective, you can use site recovery to continuously replicate your on-premises workloads into the cloud. And if your on-premise data center is down, then you can spin off the virtual machines from that replicated workloads within Azure. And the next thing is most of the time you will not deploy a single virtual machine. You will deploy multiple virtual machines with the same configuration. So if you have a requirement like that to deploy number of virtual machines with the same configuration in a single go, then you can use virtual machine scale set using which you can deploy hundreds of virtual machines with the same configuration. However, at the same time, you need to manage the availability of these virtual machines from both unplanned and planned maintenance perspective. For that purpose, Microsoft provided something called availability set by deploying your virtual machines in the virtual machine scale set or individually into availability set. Then you will be able to increase the availability of the virtual machines within the availability set. I'm going to explain about this availability set in detail in the subsequent lectures. And the next common requirement that comes from the clients is to take the advantage of cloud elasticity. I.e. in other words, you want to able to reduce your compute capacity or increase the compute capacity based on the workload. To achieve that in Azure, you can use auto scaling using which you can configure based on a metric to increase your workloads or decrease your workloads. So for example, you can measure the CPU utilization of your servers. And if the CPU utilization of your existing web form is going up beyond a certain limit, then you can easily spin off more virtual machines to add to that web form. And if the CPU utilization come back to a manageable level, then you can remove those virtual machines from the web form. In that way, you can take the advantage of cloud elasticity and also achieve cost efficiency. And the next common requirement is to use containers. If you want to use containers, then you can use container service within Azure. So these are the different features associated with virtual machines. 
However, whenever you deploy a virtual machine, you always need to deploy onto a network. Within Azure, you have virtual network, which is a logical isolation of cloud that is reserved for you. And you can connect your virtual machine to this virtual network using network interface. Most of these services that I have discussed now, I'm also going to discuss them in detail in the subsequent lectures. And the next thing is platform as a service. Within platform as a service, we have cloud service using which you can able to deploy a web role or worker role and deploy applications on cloud service. There is a difference between virtual machine and cloud service. Cloud service is more like a managed hosted environment where you don't need to worry about patching and upgrading the operating system and all those stuff. Microsoft Azure will take care of that for you. And the latest version of cloud service, I would say in my view, is app service. Using app service, you can able to deploy web applications, you can able to deploy mobile backend services, AP apps and all those stuff. And if you have a requirement to deploy microservices based applications, then you can use Service Fabric. So these are all the key platform as a service offerings from Microsoft Azure. And all of these offerings within platform as a service can in turn in one or other way can be connected to a virtual network. Bear that in mind. And finally, serverless services. Within serverless services, you have Azure functions and logic apps. Using Azure functions, you can able to deploy snippets of code on the cloud and trigger them without worrying about underlying infrastructure. So you don't need to worry about scalability and all those stuff. You will just need to pay per instance of that function and how long that function has run and what is the data consumption associated with that function. Similarly, Logic Apps. Logic Apps is more like a workflow. So you can deploy your system workflows on the cloud without worrying about, again, underlying infrastructure. You will be paying per number of actions executed within that Logic App. And overarching to all of the services, we have security. In security, there are three key services that are associated with Azure Compute Services. There are a lot more other services, but I feel these are the three key services that you always need to keep in mind. First one is Azure Security Center, using which you can understand the security posture of your virtual machines. Basically, you can define policies and based on that policies, you can collect the information from Azure Virtual Machine and identify the threats and all those stuff. And Azure Security Center will provide recommendations associated with that. Azure Security Center is a very useful thing. Anyway, I'm going to go through it in the subsequent lectures. And the next thing is Active Directory. Using Active Directory role-based access control, you can control who can have access to virtual machines or scale sets or availability sets or in fact any other Azure services within Azure. And finally, Key Vault, using which you can able to securely store certificates, keys or any sensitive information within Azure. So this is a very quick overview of all the Azure compute building blocks and how they are related to each other. In the subsequent lectures, I'm going to cover everything about infrastructure as a service and the associated Azure service offerings. I'm not going to cover platform as a service and serverless services. See you in the next lecture.